An historic launch in Texas today. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Sounds like a party there, doesn't it? SpaceX Starship made its second attempt into space. It was supposed to go for 90 minutes around the globe. Joining me now is Paul Delaney, Professor Emeritus of Physics and Astronomy at York University. Professor, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I'm sure you were watching. Oh, I certainly was, Roger. It was an exciting couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is, I guess, a little bit more than what I got the first time around. It uh, self-destructed this time. Well, uh, on balance, I think SpaceX will be happy with today's performance, but when you don't end up with either of the pieces of the rocket intact at the end of the day, you've got to be a little disappointed. Uh, you're right, the, uh, for the first stage, uh, actually, what they call a rapid unscheduled disassembly, which in common terms is it blew up, uh, that happened shortly after stage separation, but the first stage had done its job that had gotten starship through stage separation and on its way to orbit and then we're still not sure what happened towards the very end of the burn which was a bit of a surprise uh we lost contact with the second stage there is the assumption that it uh it did explode or it did uh initiate a self-destruct but what happened there as it was approaching its sort of suborbital maximum we really don't know now um I, I don't know if you can tell you or not but were there positives all the things that they think they corrected from the, the previous uh, attempted launch, uh, did they go well or do we know yet? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, back in April, we only got as far as stage separation and that was a complete failure and that's what caused the loss of the vehicle at that point in time. They have corrected that, it seems. They went through stage separation, what they call hot separation, hot staging, and that went very, very well. Starship carried on. so tick the box there the uh, first stage did begin its uh, return to earth but uh, the dynamic loads on it appear to have been too high hot staging is a very very challenging undertaking so nobody will be too surprised that we lost the first stage at that point the big question is what happened there at the end of the second stage it was almost to the cruise phase almost to the point where it was going to coast around the planet and begin the last big tick that they wanted and that was the re-entry that did not happen, so they'll be disappointed at that end. But every other aspect of today, they really did tick off a lot of boxes. They'll be combing through the data. I think they'll be pretty happy on balance. Okay, before we go, so what's next? And how many of these do they have? I mean, you, you don't have a bunch of them just laying around. So how no, many do they, they have? have they are rapidly building them. This is the way SpaceX works. They literally build rockets, fly them, blow them up or lose them and <laughs> fly again. That has been their trademark for 20 or nearly 20 years. So this is not too much of a surprise. The next one is getting ready. I would expect that we'll see it fly within the next three months, assuming nothing too untoward comes out during the data analysis. So uh, despite the, uh, the explosions overall, a fairly successful day, could we call it? I'm sure there'll be champagne flowing at Hawthorne, California, very, very liberally. No question. Interesting interpretation. All right. Professor, thank you very much, as always. Paul Delaney, Cheers. Professor Emeritus of Physics and Astronomy at York University.